In this video, we're going to look at question 1.9, uh, and this deals with GPA and study time. Um, so GPA is just a general score that you get for your studies, um, and in this study they wanted to see whether there's a correlation between how, many, how much time students spend per week on their study and what the overall GPA score is. So you can almost see a GPA as um, an NBT score. Okay, so um, the question there asks or says a survey was conducted on 218 undergraduates from Duke University who took an introductory statistic course in spring 2012. So among, among many other questions, um, this survey asked them about their GPA and the number of hours they spent studying per week. Um, and then they actually show us the results of the study in the form of a scatter plot, uh, where they show the relationship between these two variables. Um, so in the textbook, on the x-axis, we have the study hours per week, and on the y-axis, we have the GPA score. So the three questions that they ask us there is, what is the explanatory variable and what is the response variable? Um, they ask us um, to describe the relationship between the two variables um, and to make sure to discuss unusual observations, if there are any. Um, and then they ask us, is this an experiment or an observational study? And lastly, they ask us, can we conclude um, that studying longer hours um, leads to higher GPAs? Okay, so um, I've re redrawn uh, the textbook example. Um, so it's a little bit different. Um, so on our x-axis, we still have our study hours per week. Uh, but here I say our y-axis is going to be our final year mark. Um, how much did we get the previous year? And how many hours per week did we study in that year? Okay, so you'll see the data looks more or less the same. Um, I'm just making it a little bit more relevant. So let's just get away from the GPA score. Okay, so the first question is, what is the explanatory variable and what is the response variable? So what we want to know is which variable drives which variable. So we want to make, take a guess as to, okay, what value will cause the other one to be lower or higher. Um, so typically, the, and this is standard, when we have a scatter plot, we like to put our explanatory variable on the x-axis and our y variable on the y-axis. So what we're saying is that y responds to x. So if we study longer, then we expect our mark to increase. So that's why we're saying that in this case, um, the number of hours that we study is our explanatory variable that will explain the final year mark that we get out, out of the day. Okay, so in this case, we're going to say this is our explanatory variable. Explanatory. Because that explains uh, what we see in our y, var y variable. And then our y variable, this is just our response. Response. Why? Because that y variable we're saying response to our explanatory variable. So the explanatory variable explains what we see in our response variable because our response variable responds to what's happening uh, with our explanatory variable. And again, we typically like to make our explanatory variable x, uh, put that on our x-axis, and our response variable on y, put that on our y-axis. Okay, so the next question is describe the relationship between the two variables, and we have to make sure to discuss unusual observations um, if there are any. Um, so I'm going to start with the unusual observations. Um, over here we see we have 100%, um, and here we have a value that is way above 100%. Um, so that is unusual. We don't expect a student to get more than 100% as a final year mark. Um, it's not possible at university. So this immediately shows that is an unusual observation. Um, in this case, we can say that's probably a data error. Somebody captured a student's mark as higher than 100%. So if you were to do an analysis, we would typically want to ignore that point. Uh, because it's so unusual, and in this case, it's clearly, clearly wrong. You cannot get more than 100%. Um, so that seems to be a very unusual observation, um, and we can say that that one is out. Um, so here we have another observation. It might seem a bit unusual because it's far away from our other points, um, but it does make a little bit sense because we see, okay, this student had about 100% and he started a, studied a lot. So we expect that based on our explanatory and response variables. Um, so the more this student studied a lot and he got a higher mark. So we can't immediately say that that's an outlier or it's an error. That, that, that might actually be correct. So we just have to keep that in mind. So as to, as to the relationship, um, here we can either describe a relationship as positive or negative, and we can say it's a strong relationship or not as strong a relationship. Um, so in this case, it seems that the longer you study per hours of week, um, the higher your final mark um, is. So it's, it's not always the case, but there seems to be a sort of trend here. 
Um, as the number of hours that you study goes up, so does your year mark. Um, and again, it, 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 it will probably then go like that because we cannot get more than 100% for our final year mark. So in this case, I would describe the relationship as being positive. Um, there seems to be a positive um, correlation between the number of study hours per week and then your final year mark. Okay. So the next question they ask there is, is this an experiment or an observational study? Um, in this case, this is an observational study. Um, they basically ask all the students, uh, what was your study hours per week and then what was your final mark? So for an experiment, there we need to split the group into a control group and a treatment group. So this is definitely an observational study. All we did is we observed afterwards um, what students' study hours per week was and then what their final year mark was. Um, if we wanted to convert this into experiments, we would actually have to group our students um, into different groups and then tell one group, you're only allowed to study 20 hours per week and see what their final year mark is. And we would actually tell the other group, okay, you have to study 60 hours per week and then see what their final year mark is. So that would be an experiment. Um, will we ever conduct an experiment like this? Probably no, because you're messing around with students' marks. So you won't typically get an experiment dealing with study hours and week. We would just observe that afterwards because we don't want to mess around with how students perform in university. Okay, so um, the last question then is, can we conclude that studying um, longer hours leads to a higher GPAs? Um, so in this case, can we conclude that studying uh, more hours per week um, results in um, a higher final year mark? Um, so it's very tempting to say yes, but we can't actually say that. Um, all we can say is that there seems to be a correlation uh, between those two um, because this is an observational study. So the previous question should have led us towards this. Um, because this is just an observational, we can observe that there's a correlation, but we can't actually say for certain that this one is actually causing this one. Um, it, it, it might be the inverse as well. So students um, do good, they enjoy their studies more, so they will get a higher mark, but because they're enjoying their studies so much, they actually want to spend more time on their studies. So we can't say this one is for certainly driving that one there. It might be the opposite. Um, so the only way we can say for certain that this one is driving that one is again to conduct an exper experiment. To split our students into a control group and a treatment group and then we can compare their um, yearly mark and see uh, which group did better. But again, this is just an observational study. So all we can say is that there is a positive correlation between study hours per week and then your final um, year mark. We cannot say that this one definitely drives that one. 